If you've clicked on this video, it's probably because you're a fellow watch nerd or geek, just like me. You like to dabble in things, in hobbies and collecting stuff, like watches. And I remember when I was a kid and I got my first bike, I loved dabbling. I would change out the handlebars and then paint the bike a different colour. I even put a couple of footy cards on the front and back wheel spokes and then burned down the road like I was on a Harley. And the fun didn't stop when I grew up. When I bought my first car at 18 years old, I grabbed the angle grinder from my dad's garage. I butchered the spring bars within three inches of their life so that the car can sit a lot lower to the ground. I swapped out the wheels to the biggest, meanest mags that I could find, but the icing of the cake was hanging that disco ball off the rear view mirror. Then I'd burn down the road like I was in a hotted up sports car. But now that I've grown up, I should be more mature. <laughs> but even as an adult, I still like to dabble in things. I'm still a geek, a nerd of sorts. So when this parcel came in the mail with his project watch, a build-it-yourself kit, I looked at the instructions and it said to allow between 60 to 120 minutes to assemble. I said, yeah, right. I smashed this out in 14 minutes flat. Everything was in the kit, all the tools to assemble the dial, the handset, the crown stem, the case back. It was a piece of cake. Now assembling this kit was fun and easy, but I was more interested in checking out the finished product rather than the process. In other words, the watch itself. Because I've already done a few self builds in the past. Early on in this watch hobby, I modded quite a few of my own Seiko watches. I swapped out bezels and inserts, hardlex crystals to sapphire ones, even handsets and dials and crowns. Quite a few of these parts I sourced from Namoki back then. Nonetheless, you saw the pop-up. Namoki has sponsored this video, so I'll leave all the links in the description. And today I'm going to have a close look at this watch which I assembled. And I'll tell you if it's any good and where it could use some improvements. Because coming in at 269 bucks with all the supplied tools, that's pretty good value. Let's check this thing out. The model of this watchmaking kit is NMK WK07. It's a Spork Pilot watch. It's about a 38mm diameter, and it's quite an interesting piece because it's extremely legible, fantastic loom. Coming in at 38, it really wears well, but it's not without its flaws either. And dealing with Namoki in the past, like I said, I've purchased quite a bit of stuff off them from bezels and inserts and sapphire crystals. I've modded my own Seikos. And if you have a look at their website, you can see there's quite a few watchmaking kits. And the way I see it, this is a hobby, this is pretty cool. It took me 14 minutes to assemble this thing, it was so easy. And at the end of it, you end up with something that, in the scheme of things, didn't really cost a lot of money, but it's built pretty darn well. Now looking at the specs, you can see a case diameter of 38 mil with a lug to lug of 46.5. I measure a case height of exactly 11.2 with a lug width of 20. That crown is a 5.8 millimeter screw down crown. It has excellent knurling. And the total weight of this watch comes in at 74 grams on the supplied leather strap. On the wrist, as you can see, the watch's footprint, no problems. 38 mil, 46.5 lug to lug, even that height coming in at 11.2, the comfort has been fantastic. And that leather strap, straight out of the box, the leather strap has actually been quite malleable. So I've put it on, instantly the comfort has been there. So a really nice, neat experience. It's a generic pilot style watch, very clean. Looking closely at that case, you can see that it's got a highly polished side, brushed top, polished bezel, and for me, that's a bit of a mismatch. It would have been nice for a pilot style watch to be pretty much all brushed. It's a tool. Moving on, looking at the guts of the watch, it came with the Seiko NH35 Series 2 movement. It was easy to assemble, installing the dial, the handset, the crown stem, pretty straightforward. Now, one thing that did impress me about that watch is that crown. Although it's just a standard generic crown, it's got excellent knurling. The experience, it pops out. There's a real healthy pop, and you can see the spring on this thing is fantastic. The knurling and the latch down experience on this has been beautiful. In fact, I liken this to a lot more expensive watches. That's brilliant. But unscrewing it again, two clicks, and as you can see, we can hack the movement and we can adjust the time. We can lock that in. You've got a date hidden at around 4.30. It's unobtrusive, it's out of the way. And if you do need a date on a watch, it's there. 
It's also a colored match, so it's not in your face. So well done. Turning the watch over, as far as the case back's concerned, it's just a generic case back. And I suppose you're better off having this than a display case back because it aids in that height. A nice slim profile of 11.2. Now if I look at the loom of the watch, that was actually a big surprise because I expected the hands had to be nice and bright, but even those Arabics and markings almost kept up. That's pretty impressive. So this thing glows really nice. I think the Mokiev created a nice doll and handset combo here that really sets this watch off. And before I get onto the gripes of the watch, the sapphire crystal on this is a flat sapphire. It's got blue AR. This is the way blue AR should be done. It's so, so subtle. There's no washout, the dial is clean, and you can barely see that it's a tinge of blue. So again, in that department, really well done. Now, what are my gripes of this watch? Well, like I mentioned earlier, polished bezel, polished sides, really for me, tastefully, I think it should have been done in satinized finish. I just think this watch is screaming tall, no shiny areas, just to be played down a little bit. But that's a personal gripe. Secondly, as a mod, the crown, when I assembled it, the case and crown, the crown stem itself was a generic long, well, a standard long one. I had to remove the actual stem and replace it with a pre-cut stem that they supplied. Now it would have been just as easy for them to put that stem on the crown. That's just a little bit of an extra step that could have been avoided. And I potentially could have made this build into a 12 minute build instead of a 14. But that's just me complaining. Next gripe, the leather strap. Although it's quite malleable and soft, in fact, straight out of the box, it was wearable, which is great. I don't know about, there's something behind here that is niggling me, something that's biting into my skin. It could be that stitching. It's somewhere around here, just in there. So it's something that I have to address. Apart from that, the comfort has been really good. And that's pretty much it, because as a 269 US dollar little self build, it's easy. Also, I forgot to mention, even though the watch has drilled lugs, it also came with fat spring bars. So the watch is capable of taking fat spring bars as well as standard, so that's pretty cool. So the crystal is very good, the loom is very good, the wearability is no brainer. Overall, I think Namoka, which has been supplying mod parts for so many years, developing some of their own dolls and self builds, this is pretty decent. So if you've got nothing to do on the weekend, you're looking for something to dabble in, you're a bit of a nerd or a bit of a watch geek, just like me, and you've got 60 to 120 minutes to spare, or in my case, 14 minutes, well, this is a nice, fun project. And honestly, probably something you can put together with one of your kids, get them involved in the hobby, and then potentially hand over the watch to them. Not bad. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Enjoying the hobby, enjoying the fun. Hopefully no snobbery found on this channel. I try to keep it as real as possible. If you like what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button. Tell all your friends. And next time when we get together, we can dabble in a few more things. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.